Or you got this, and, and I hear it from Willie today now. Now, I mean, I, I, I don't get it from my dad now. I still get it from <laughs> Willie every time in spring training. Willie's like, boy, how many home runs you got? Like 440 or 494, Willie. Oh, that means you need like 160, you know, and it's always the same thing. But, you know, I know the love is there, and, and I think that it took a, it, it made a, a big sigh of relief when I finally got my dad, when my dad finally just said, you know, I, I'm proud of what you've accomplished throughout your career. He has become the first man in the history of the game to hit as many as 400 home runs and steal as many as 400 bases. What do you admire about Barry's game? When I left baseball, I was 39th on the list in home runs. All times 39th, which wasn't too bad. But what Barry has done, getting at the point of 500, 500. To me, this is mind-boggling. Willie and I used to be the only person to have 300, 300. And then along come Andrea Dawson, fine ball player. Barry's got 400, 400. And now he's going to 500. So when you talk about all-around players in the history of the game, you cannot leave his name out. You cannot because if you look at home runs, RBIs, stolen bases, to me, it, it, it's an amazing feat. You started off talking about the importance of playing for the World Series ring. Put that into perspective for me, what that means to Barry Bonds. I don't know what God has in store, but I tell you one thing, I still know I'm gonna have it. And all these critics and all these people that have said things, one day I'm gonna have that ring. There's, but you know what, it's gonna, gonna happen. Ring, the ring is important. I know it's gonna happen. I think the ring is, is important here also for our family. Not from the standpoint that he has to win it. If not, it, I'll it, steal it, Willie's. It, it, <laughs> Embrace this experience. You know what you're up against in the next few months. Can you maybe? Sh I know. I know the spotlight hasn't always been your favorite thing in the world. <laughs> no. Today, to, be, to put it lightly, my whole goal has always been winning. And, and um, you know, everyone's going to talk about this streak. And yeah, you know, my whole thing is, what if it ends today? Uh, what, what's everyone going to say after that? You know, am I the same person I am today as I will be tomorrow? Or am I different to everyone because I didn't do something they, they expected? You know, am I, am I put on a pedestal for their, for their self-achievement? Or uh, am I going to be, you know, all of a sudden now I get so many nice things thrown at me, I, I'm almost shocked. I, I don't know where it's coming from. You know, oh, he's, he's, he's handling himself so right. He's doing, I'm the same person I was last year than I am this year. I don't care about these home runs. So, I mean, as much as people want to assume that they don't believe it, I don't really care. I'd rather win a World Series ring. It's a but people still are fascinated with the blasts. They're, they're fascinated with the home run. They love to look at numbers. They see you're ahead of McGuire. They see that you're on a pace. And invariably, whether you win or lose, whether you like it or not, that's what they're going to want to talk about. I can embrace it. It's just that I, I, I don't want Mark McGuire's home run record. You don't want it? Uh-uh. I want his ring. <laughs> I want that ring he has. That, that, that's what we play for. Um, you know, right now, you know, everyone always asks me, well, what are you doing different? How do you? I, I don't know. You know, you have to ask God. I, I can't figure this out. I, I have never seen anything like this in my life besides Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa. I've never been through anything like this in my entire life. I can't explain it. I don't, I don't know. If I knew what I was doing, I would have done this a long time ago. When you are the center of the circus, and it will be a circus if you, you keep it at this pace. Can you endure day after day after day the crowds and the questions and the stupid questions and the intrusions and the... It, it's like your life times ten. Can you do it? I can do it, Roy. It just, as long as people understand that it's... I can't predict the future for you. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, I look at these records that they show on TV. I've had plenty of talks with my father and, and Willie a little bit because the problem isn't during this home run thing no one wants to talk to me i can't willie won't talk to me my dad won't talk to me the best part was the kmbr had this thing on and some of the media said well if barry starts talking to the media everyone's gonna know it's fake barry never talks to the media that much so i mean if barry all of a sudden does like sammy sosa you're gonna know he's lying so i don't know i'm kind of caught in the middle of this whole thing of 
what should I do? What shouldn't I do? How should I handle this? What should the club do? What should we all do together? You know, I think it should be an enjoyable thing for everybody. If it does happen, everyone should enjoy it. It's got to be a lonely feeling, though. It is lonely. I mean, even my own teammates don't really say anything. No, no one said anything. You know, I, you know, sometimes I'll look in the paper, and you still get that, well, Barry doesn't, it doesn't take Barry to win. It takes a team, which is right. It does take a team to win. And so it's, everyone avoids this. I, I don't know why. I mean, I don't know how to handle it. I don't know what to do. It's lonely at times. You really, you really feel alone out there at times. How do you define arrogance? To me, it'd be... I mean, I feel like, I don't know what arrogance is. I don't even know what that, what is the definition of arrogance? To me, it'd be somebody with lack of confidence. I'm very confident what I do, but I'm good at what I do. I don't deny the fact that I'm not good. I don't deny that, and I don't think anyone should deny it. If you're good, you're good. If you could remake the image for whatever reason, if you could change it all in the midst of this incredible year, it's already incredible year, no matter what happens. Right. Would you? I wouldn't change anything, Roy. Just do the simple fact that I can't. I'm not going to change what has happened. I'm not going to change the past. What's there is there. I I've learned from it. That's one thing I have done. I I'm very proud of myself because I have made some changes about myself. Um, and I have learned. I'm still somewhat the same person at times. Uh, you know, I do get those flashbacks <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> In 2001, Barry Bonds set a new record for most home runs hit by the All-Star break with 39, surpassing the record of 37 homers set by Reggie Jackson in 1969 and Mark McGuire in 1998. Reggie ended up with 47 homers that season. Big Mac set the single season record of 70 in 98. I don't know what arrogance is. Your dad's a professional baseball player, so the scouts look at you to do a lot more. If I think you like me, I'll do anything possible to make you not like me. Back to the drive, deep right field, go ball, it's gone! And the Pirates win it in the bottom of the 11th inning! I've been every championship since Little League, and I've lost every championship from the Little League all the way up. Barry Bonds has become the second man in the history of baseball with 40 homers and 40 steals. If you're good, you're good. Nobody out. Deep to right field. This one is on its way to McCovey Cove. Number 500. It's into the water. Barnes has hit the historic 500th homer. The on-base percentage was a, a billion. When the you're, walks. When you're walking 177 <laughs> times, hitting 73 homers, slugging over 860. Most feared hitter in the game ever. This was the run and hide season. If you want to see all 73 shots that Barry hit in 2001, stay tuned right now. center field this one way back there and headed for the Allegheny Christmas tree farm. And 
Barry Bonds with number 29. Oh boy, high fly ball, deep right field, has a chance, and gone. Barry Bonds strikes again, his 38th home run. The most home runs any major leaguer has ever hit before the All-Star break. Ho Heave Ho Park. 447 Oof. different pitchers mm. he's gone yard on. Mentioned all the ballparks earlier, 36 of them. 377 have come at home. Most of them as an outfielder. By the way, inside the park, three of them. So if, hey. you, take, if you take the 757 and minus the three, you get 754, which is the same number that Henry Aaron hit out of the park. So they each have hit 754 outside the yard. Let's get to the grand salamis that Barry has hit in his career. Grand Slam number one came back in 1990, May 22nd. Off the Astro pitcher, Dan Schatziter. He likes the Astro. <laughs> the first of how many? Well, at least two, May 16th, 1992. Right field. That ball has distance. There it goes. A Grand Slam home run. Six to nothing, Pittsburgh. Shocker off of Padre pitcher Greg Harris. Grand Slam number three came in 1993. Willie Blair gave it up. I was there. Say it louder. I was there. <laughs> hey, man, brother. Number four, May of 1994, Armando Reynoso gave this one up. Grand Slam number five came in 1996. 17 home runs. That one's driven to center field. That's deep. That's back, and you can tell it goodbye. Grand slam for Barry Bonds. That ties the club record that Matt Williams had for the month of April, the 11 all run. He hit a couple that year. Grand slam number six came just about a week later. 
off Scott's service. Grand slam number seven would wait to 1997. Three balls and one strike to Bonds. Fly ball, deep right center field. Back goes Amaro. There she goes. Grand slam, home run, Barry Bonds. His seventh career slam. 1998, while Sosa and McGuire were slashing home runs, Barry was going deep off Jeff Juden with the bases loaded. That was the eighth grand slam of his career. In 01, he did it twice. On July 26th, he hit it off Kurt Schilling. He did another grand slam one month later. Bonds 11th and final Grand Slam came against Dennis Tankersley. The pitch to Bonds and Bonds gets a long one. A deep right field. This one is a monster. It is out of here off the scoreboard. A Grand Slam for Barry Bonds. Interesting when Barry was asked what's left after he hit the record-breaking home run, he said more baseball, but he didn't, interestingly, say a World Series ring, which for so many years he has been chasing. His postseason career, he played in the postseason with both the Pirates and the Giants, much better with San Francisco, including an outstanding World Series in 02, in which he hit over 470 and blasted a handful of home runs. You see the eight that he's hit with the Giants, but still no World Series ring. He certainly has made an impression. But that might deep to right field, way back and gone. Barry Bonds on a 1-2 pitch. Homers to right center, and the Pirates take a 1-0 lead. Flags, and that ball is a mammoth shot to right field, and that ball is gone. Wow. Barry Bonds 0-1 for at a walk, and he hits one in the air to left field and deep. Back goes Chipper Jones, back onto the track, back in the wall, looking up, and it's out of here. Barry Bonds with an opposite field home run, his second home run of the series. Bonds hammers one into left center field. This one is a big ride. It is out of here. Here's the pitch. Bonds, a right. This one is way back. It's headed to the water. <laughs> this game is tied. <laughs> Two one pitch. Swing. There's a shot deep in the right field. That one is on its way and way back out of here. Home The walk-off variety. We'll touch them all here. We'll focus on September 23rd, 1986. It's a two-run shot that came in the bottom of the ninth, helped his Bucks defeat those Philadelphia Phillies 6-5. Five years later, August 12th of 1991, number nine on the touch them all list. Bonds up on the bottom of the 11th. Guess where this ends up? Pitch Bonds with a drive, deep right field. Go ball, it's gone. And the Pirates win it in the bottom of the 11th inning. There's that familiar swing, and I've seen that pose a few times. June 30th of 1995. He's wearing a giant uniform now and taking on the team. He's blasted off more than anyone else. The Padres, a three-run home run in the bottom of the ninth. That's off of Trevor Hoffman right there. That was a fastball from Hoffman. Yes, it was. So uh, he's, you know, he's always shown his dramatic uh, ways. He's uh, also handled the Astros. Hmm. See that look? Solo shot, bottom of the ninth. Giants beat them by a run four to three. It got to the point you figure in the career. Why are we pitching to this guy with the game on the line? Early on, maybe you understand it, but with the game on the line, why would you do that? August 30th, 1999 against those fighting Phils. Mm. A big time pad flip from Barry. 
That ended it there as the Giants beat them by a score of 6-4. I think Dusty enjoyed seeing Barry come up in the 9th oh, or 10th or 11th. <laughs> Following the 2001 magical year, which we'll look at in just a bit, April 5th of 2002, picking up where he left off. Two-run shot, bottom 10, the home opener against the Padres, winner. Lefty again. It never feared lefties. Don't matter. Lefty, righty, you can you can roll it up there. He's gonna hit it out. I think he enjoyed lefties more. Oh yeah. So too. He gets a curtain call as the Giants beat the Padres opening day by a score of three to one. His birthday is July 24th. This is what he did in 03. The submariner delivers and Bond swings a drive deep into left center. Way back there. The ball game is over. Goodbye. Happy birthday, Barry Bond. For years, John Miller called games at Camden Yards and Baltimore games with Cal Ripken, and then he moved out west and gets to watch Barry Bonds do this. He beat the Diamondbacks that day, 3-2. August of 2003, the 19th day, a solo shot into McCovey Cove in the bottom of the 10th. What a deflating feeling it is for the opposition. You know he's coming up and know the chances are during this run between 01, 02, and 03, yep. that could happen and happen a lot. You think you'd learn two days after that one this I was there Carl he said if I get one pitch it's over we going home fellas that's what he said in the dugout for that one you remember this game right here right there I was there in San Francisco Giants beat him by a score of <laughs> four to three so he beat him five four in the 19th two days later he beats him where are you I'm floating in the bottom I'm in the bottom I'm in the bottom Casey <laughs> Against the Rockies, May 28th of 2004, another ninth inning, let's go home type shot from Barry as the Giants beat Colorado by two. There's the bat speed again, he waits on the ball, opposite field, and he still has enough to, to take this sucker out of there. He's hit 35 of those. No one else has hit more than three. God! Bonds has done it again! I D out of here! And they've come to cheer and boo. Well, there's a shot. Deep right center field. That's going to be 7.51. And he is now tied with the base. A home run for Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds hits his 733rd home run to tie Aaron. Drive to left center field and deep. That baby is. One to right field, back goes Hidalgo. It's a P, and it's gone! And the fans here in Baltimore are standing.
another one. There it deep is. to right. That one's out of here. That one is hit well to left field. Way back there. This one is gone. A home run. He had 176 were in a pirate uniform playing under Jim Leland. And of course, since then, oh, 500 more, 600 more. This was home run 7, 55, 7, 56. And of course, now sitting there after going into McCovey Cole for the last time, 757 home runs. Most of them in front of his beloved San Francisco Giant fans. Barry Bonds, the last three are the ones people have because their memories are so fresh, but there have been so many more in the city by the bay. Hits one to left center field. He hits it well. Let's go back. It is out of here. Number 700. Ruth and now Bonds, the 700 home run club. The pitch. Bonds hits one high. Hits it deep to center. Out of here. 750. He pushes one high in the air. Deep to right center, way back there, and high up into the bleachers in center field. There go the runners, a 3-2 pitch. Bond swings it. It's a high fly ball to center field. Well hit. Jones going back onto the warning track, up against the Ivy. He looks up. It's gone. Bonds has hit his second home run of the game into the wind this time. To left center field, a three-run shot. Pittsburgh versus San Francisco, twice as many seasons in San Francisco, a lot more than just twice as many home runs for Barry Bonds. And instead of swinging and missing, as Barry Bonds has done throughout his career, he makes a little adjustment and gets a piece of it to get another swing.